So before we dive into this video, I just want to give you guys a quick little update on some things going on with me. A lot of crazy stuff has been going on in my personal life recently, so that's why this video is going up on a Saturday and not on like Thursday or Friday. And I'm not entirely sure when regular scheduled content will be coming back onto this channel because of the things going on in my personal life at the moment. So I'm not saying that I'm going to disappear for nearly a year like I did last time, but more so like things are going to be pretty inconsistent for a bit while I get things sorted out in my personal life. So we're going to still have this video go up for you guys today. Just keep in mind that things are probably going to be fairly inconsistent for a little bit. Just want to give you guys a little quick heads up and let's go ahead and dive on into this video. Hey guys, it's me and today I'm here with a new video for you guys. If you see my laundry on my bed in the background, just know and it's because I haven't felt like putting it away yet as per usual. But today we're going to be doing a video that I have been wanting to do for quite some time. I mentioned that I wanted to do this video last year, I think is when I first talked about doing this video, but we're finally doing it today because it's Pride Month, Father's Day is around the corner, and that is that we are going to be talking about men that I find to be very attractive within the metal scene. Some of these guys are going to be like your more like stereotypical, fairly attractive men, and then these other guys are going to be like, okay, there's definitely something there or it's just like mostly like this is just me finding them to be very attractive and I always tell people like oh no I don't have a type I don't have a type but then you see me break things down or you see my track record of the guys that I mess around with and whatnot and then it's just like hmm Maybe I do have a bit of a type. Well, then it would be nice to just show some love to some bands that I really do enjoy and artists that I really do enjoy. And just also poke at the fact that I find these people to be quite attractive. Now, there is one outlier on this list and that person is technically non-binary, but they're also an AMAP person, so... Okay, we're gonna use some queer terminology here. If you're unfamiliar with AMAB and AFAB, AMAB is assigned male at birth and AFAB is assigned female at birth. So there's some queer terminology for you. Actually, I think two, three, I think, th no, four, five. Wait, how many? I can't count. Oh, four, five, yes, five people on this list are actually queer. Now I have 13 people on my list and there's probably some guys that I am missing and leaving off, but this is all that I can think of off the top of my head initially because these are guys that live rent free in my head. I have 13 in total, three of them are going to be like honorable mentions. No, this is not a ranking video either. I'm not going to be like, this is the hottest man and we're just going to like rank all these hot dudes and whatnot. But there's like three guys and I'm like, I find you to be very attractive, but you don't make my bussy quiver. Did, I, I am sorry. I am so sorry for saying that. And I'm not even a bottom. <laughs> this is what happens when you let the gays do what they want to do. We just ruin everybody's fun. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and dive on into this. But before we do so, if you guys are new here to my channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. And also while you're down there, definitely give this video a thumbs up because that'll help me out a lot. All my links are down in the description box below, which are the links to my Twitter, Instagram, and my beauty fashion lifestyle channel. So definitely check me out in those places if you're interested. And let's go ahead and dive on into this. All right, so I'll go ahead and just like touch on like some honorable mention people and everything. Like these are guys that I'm like, you know what? You're pretty cute. You're pretty cute and I like you, but you're not somebody that's like making me like thirst if you catch my drift. First person that I want to touch on is going to be Parker Jameson of Starkill. Been a fan of Starkill for quite some time. I do know, I think that they're possibly taking a break because Parker and co have launched like a, I think like a pop punk project on the side and everything. I don't know if they're taking a full on break from Starkill or if Starkill is just ultimately done for. I'm not entirely sure, but I know that they were actually like 
during lockdown in particular, they were re-releasing stuff from um, the Shadow Sleep album, like re-recording and just revamping them and everything, because honestly, all TL Shade, the original version of that album sounded a bit crunchy. It sounded a bit crunchy, it sounded a bit crusty, but then they started reworking it and it actually sounds really good, like the newer versions of songs from that album. But anyways, I've always have found Parker to be quite attractive and pretty cute. And I've always have had like some serious hair envy because Homeboy's got some great hair. I don't know what it is about his hair. I am just obsessed with it. Move on from him into our next honorable mention, which is gonna be Tommy Kervik of Camelot and Seventh Wonder. I mean, he's very, very attractive. Like him and Cobra are probably like the most attractive couple within the metal scene. Like, y'all. Like, cause Cobra, she is stunning. Absolutely stunning. And Tommy is gotten like, he's like so buff. I will say this, he definitely looks a lot better with the beard. Cause during that period of time when he first joined Camelot and he was just rocking like the little like landing strip on his face and everything and whatever that was I don't even know or was he just straight up clean shaven I don't know I don't really remember all that I do know is that oh wait I got a photo right over here <laughs> I completely forgot about the side poster from when I went to the Silver Thor North America tour yeah he had like the little like landing strip thing on his chin and everything and it's just like yeah he looked pretty good back then but the beard though but i'm also not really the biggest into like very buff dudes and everything which is why he's on the more honorable mention side of things and then lastly i want to touch on drake christensen of uh, runes of elysium he is so cute again looks really really good when he's got the full-on beard going on but he's just like super cute and just like wonderful like him and i have chatted a few times over the years and just yeah wonderful guy cool person great band and again very cute so now let's move on into the men that i'm like yes you were definitely on the list first that we're gonna talk about is ash o'hara so he used to be in tesseract he was on the album that Nocturne was on. I can't remember what that album was called off the top of my head, but he's also in a project called Voices from the Fuselage. And so he's very much within like the prog ambient gent sphere when it comes to the metal scene. And he's very adorable. Like he's just like the scruff that he always has going on and just the way that he carries himself and whatnot. It's just like very like soft boy energy. And it just, I, I, mm, and I think he, he's so, mm. when I found out that he was gay, it melted me a little bit. Cause it's just like, oh, I have a chance, but he lives in the UK. And as far as I know, if he still has a boyfriend, so there's also that. And he also just has such a great voice too and everything. It's just like so pretty and soft and lovely and just, yes. Next up, we have a guy that I have talked about endlessly on the channel. Um, I haven't talked about him in a while, but there is a period of time in, when was it, 2021, I think, when I was talking about him on a very regular basis and that is Evan from Enemy Inside and actually he was a session guitarist for Eden over here but yeah but Evan don't know his last name I can't remember his last name but Evan does it for me I was mentioning it all the time in the reaction videos that I was doing for like enemy not enemy of reality enemy inside's music videos for the seven album and not only that but there was even a point when I was speaking on it so much that enemy inside actually on YouTube like their official YouTube channel commented on one of my reaction videos saying that like hey we got a new video out and Evan looks mighty good in it and just the fact that they were teasing me over it just yeah like I have always found him to be very hot like from the moment I saw him in like the unfaithful music video from Exit Eden I was just like oh yeah 
oh yeah i don't know what it is about him like he is just so fine to me like the hair the beard the nose ring i don't know what it is about the nose ring the nose ring on him just really does it for me next up we have toby duncan of trash boat so trash boat i would label them as more so like more along the lines of like punk and hard rock than metal but they definitely deserve like a spot on this list especially after the um don't you feel amazing album dropping and everything like that particular album is a pretty heavy hitter in comparison to like their initial releases and whatnot like that one like just like toby comes out initially as bisexual and it's just like oh the queer energy is here and they are angry and i want to say within like the past few months toby has come out as non-binary and is more so just like not labeling themselves in general so even when it comes to like their sexuality so it's just like this is just a very queer individual is what we're getting at when i watched the music video for he's so good i was just like okay okay yeah i'm like he, he's cute all right all right but then i watched the music video for don't you feel amazing and then i was just like the queer energy in this is going off the charts because home skillet looks fine as full like i mentioned before with tommy i'm not into like very like buff and ripped guys but hot damn like when that honey or oil or whatever it was just started being poured on them in that music video that was when I really wanted to know what their butt looked like. Next up we have is Samuel Bendix of Lucis. So Lucis is a band that I learned about, I want to say through Instagram, because I want to say Samuel or Lucis, one of their Instagrams followed me way, way back. And I decided to check out the project and everything and wound up really enjoying it. It's definitely along the lines of like punk, thrash hard rock kind of sound it's a very like it's very different for me and when you find out like the type of stuff that i typically gravitate towards too when it comes to metal music and whatnot this is definitely like it both stands out but it's also like you know what i kind of see it though and also i feel like when it comes to like people that are like Samuel who do drag and they create music it's just like you already get like an idea of the kind of music that they're gonna do it's not the best kind of music that's out there but I never once thought that I would actually see like drag queen doing metal music and this kind of metal music and actually do it really well Samuel's fine very Fine, like the body, honey, the body. What am I speaking with this accent for? I am the gay. We're just gonna let it go. We're just gonna let it be. We're just gonna do our thing today. All right, next guy that we're gonna talk about is Joey Marin de Boer. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I could be wrong. He's Dutch, but he is the drummer of Dear Mother. He is Charlotte's Vessel's live drummer and then he was also back in the day with Delane and I remember when he first joined the band I was just like when he first joined Delane I remember because keep in mind Delane used to be my favorite band of all time for the longest and I remember when he first joined the band I was just like okay yeah he's pretty cute he's pretty cute then I met him in person because in 2019, when Delane had their co-headlining tour with Amorphous and on a cafe across North America, I obviously got VIP tickets and everything because, again, Delane at the time were my favorite band of all time. And I had to not only see them live for a third time, but I also had to meet them and whatnot and get all mushy gushy with Charlotte and let her know that, hey, you're my biggest inspiration in life. In the process of the meet and greet, getting to see Joey in person, I was just like, ooh, ooh, this guy's pretty cute. Just like the friendly demeanor and just that positive energy that was just coming from him and it's just like, okay, all right. I feel a little thing happening here 
like I, it's just it's like one of those things where it's just like at first you're like you, you see some photos of somebody you're like okay yeah they're like attractive like they're cute and everything all right cool but then you see them in person and it's just like oh i hope that i'm that way for guys that i look good in photos but then i look a lot better in person now that we're halfway into the list you guys are probably starting to get a feel for the kind of guys that I'm into. Like I mentioned earlier, I was just like, yeah, I don't really have that much of a type. But then like I started listing off like the guys that I'm like really into and it's just I'm like, you, mm, nah, you, you kind of do. Like I mentioned earlier, beards do it for me. I'm a sucker for a good beard and body hair and just, I like a good hairy guy in general. We'll just leave it at that. If I can get a good look at a guy and just realize like, you know what? You got a hairy ass. That's how you get up onto a list. Is that a bit much for me to say? I'm sorry, I'm gay. Sorry about it. Can't help it. I'm gay. The next guy that we are going to talk about is sadly a legend who has passed and that is Peter Steele from Typo Negative. Now I mentioned before, I'm not really that much into like the big buff guys but i don't know there's just something about peter Steele that has always has done it for me like the hair the facial structure like the voice i mean like his voice like that deep voice that you can just when you're listening to him sing you can just feel it like resonate in your ball sack like just yes and the fact that he posed for playgirl and you see everything yes everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you'll thank me later if you didn't know about this yeah which i'm sure most of you probably know because i mean like again legend icon everybody knows who peter Steele is and if you don't know who he is you're going to learn who he is after me mentioning that he posed for playgirl and that you can see his ass and his dick so you're welcome i didn't get into typo negative till like sometime after he had passed and everything and so i see like posts from like artists that i keep up with that have actually have toured with him back when he was still alive and and whatnot and just seeing like them recounting their time story together and whatnot like he just seemed like such a great guy and just such an a nice and wonderful person and then to see him being like this very attractive guy with a great ass it just warms me up a little bit inside just knowing that it's just like okay somebody that i find to be very attractive is actually a pretty decent person like they're not just a, like an attractive person with a good voice like they're actually an attractive person with a good voice that is also a decent human being this next one is probably going to catch a few people off guard but at the same time, it probably shouldn't. I really do think that it probably will just throw people off just a bit. But that is gonna be Nergal from Behemoth. Yes. Like, there's just something about him. Like, and I'm not talking like, like back in the day, Nergal. Like, no, we're talking like present day. I find him to be just such an interesting person in general. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not that big into Behemoth's music, and same thing goes for me and that man, like there are some songs from both projects that I'm like, you know what, I can get on with this, but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that I'm just I'm like, eh, it's not really for me. But I find Narel so fascinating as a person, like he's so intriguing to me, and then again, I find him to be quite attractive. Like for me, age really isn't that big of a deal unless we're talking like dating and relationships and whatnot. But when it comes to like finding people attractive and whatnot, age isn't that much of a deal breaker for me. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't there like, isn't his ass somewhere out on the internet? I need to check that again. I want to say there's like an ass pic or an ass video of his out there. 
that just gave me a flashback. I, this is a totally random tangent here, but that just gave me a flashback to like years and years and years ago when Epica were touring with Barry and Dawn and one of the members of the band went streaking across the stage during Epica's set. Like there's a video on YouTube of it, or at least there was one way, way, way back in the day. The next guy that we are gonna talk about is another guitarist and that is Kaylin. I can't remember their last name but Kaylin of Catalyst Crime. So Catalyst Crime is a band that I am into and that I'm looking forward to hearing more stuff from. They're currently working on a new album which I'm very very excited about. Zoe is such a wonderful singer and I'm super excited to be able to like see like her back in the scene and actually doing something again because Insetia, I believe is how you pronounce the band's name, was pretty good but Catalyst Crime is absolutely epic. Which by the way, big congrats to Zoe for being in Cradle of Filth now. She is um, their female singer and keyboardist. But Caitlin is one of their guitarists. How I started following him was I'm pretty sure he started following me on Instagram and then I started following him and like as time started going by I was just like you know what I find this guy very attractive yeah I do I do he's very cute and just some like very much like up my speed and whatnot like he just has like this demeanor to him that is just like you know what you're very gentle you're a very gentle calm soul and everything and that just makes me more attracted to him and everything because he's already like attractive already but just like the energy that just radiates from him just makes me even more attracted to him and i know for like some people like they'll probably be like but you do know that he's trans and everything and might think that that might be a deal breaker for me body parts aren't an issue for me I'm like yeah like men are men and then like i mentioned earlier and like i'm also attracted to like non-binary people as well and everything like as long as i find them to be attractive and whatnot then that's the case that's why i for the most part like i did find just as queer and everything in general like i will say that i'm gay because like my track record says men and everything but it's just like if like a non-binary person is attractive to me then hey Let's go for it. Generally speaking, like I said, going off of my track record, very much gay. He's trans. So what? Still fine as hell. Next up we have is Sergio. I believe his last name is Muzzle. I could be wrong. I probably am, but I know his first name is Sergio from Simblant. So when Simblant first came into the scene, or at least when I first became aware of them, which was back in 2014 with Lunar Manifesto, I didn't really find him to be that attractive. I didn't, I'm gonna be brutally honest here, I didn't find him to be that attractive. But when Obscura came out and he started rocking that beard, bitch, yes. I am a sucker for a beard. A good beard will do a lot of things for me. And that is very much the case with Sergio. There's just something about like a strong beard on a bald man that just does it for me. And he's got a great voice. Like, dude, like his voice is just so wonderful. I mean, like Vermilion Eclipse like was one of my top 10 favorite albums last year. Stunning, stunning release. And I know I did some reaction videos to songs off of that particular album and I mentioned possibly in those reaction videos about how much I find him attractive. God, uh, God, I just had like the most vile thought come into my head. Like I had to let him scream into my asshole. God, ooh, I need, ooh, girl, no, mm-mm, mm-mm, vile, vile, electric chair, no. Mm -mm. And the last guy that we are gonna touch on in this video, or should I say that I like to touch on? E but the last guy that we are gonna talk about in this video is Rickard from Elaine. So I've mentioned this before, I'm pretty sure that I find Rickard attractive. And that really 
really expedited itself after seeing Elaine live last month and being able to like chat with them after the show and everything and seeing Rickard in person like yeah and then also I mentioned in the reaction video that I did for um Varda Salad it always is a wonderful moment for a gay when an attractive man acknowledges your existence because when I went up for their like unofficial meet and greet after the show like before I could even say like anything besides hello Rickard just chimes in and just says love the reacts and the way that I was just like okay time to become a verse king I had like a little bit of makeup on at the show I had a super twunk tank on super twunk is a store slash Instagram account centered around queer erotic art and um yeah, I have two of their tank tops. And so it's just like, hmm, yeah, I'm gonna wear one of these to the show where it's just like a hairy man's ass hanging out on a shirt. So I wore that to the show. And so it's just like, I very much looked the part of, yeah. Like I said, like getting like recognition from an, an attractive man as a gay works so many wonders works so so many wonders for your self-esteem at times because Rickard like he again very attractive strong beard wonderful tattoos and just again we're gonna get very vile here but it's just like you just know he has a hairy ass you just know he does men have objectified women for years within the music industry and the metal scene in particular, let me do it to the men for once. He's got such a great sense of humor because I remember years ago, I don't keep up with the Twitch because it's just, I struggle with streamers and whatnot. I I just struggle with it. If VODs are available, I'll watch them, but like actually watching like streams as they actually are happening and whatnot, it is difficult for me. It is so difficult for me. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of my attention span. I don't know what it is, but I can't get into streamers, but like he streams on Twitch. If you keep up with the Twitch streams and whatnot, you can get a feel for a sense of humor. But I remember years ago when the band first came about and I remember there was an interview that I saw just the jokes that he was cracking in that interview were giving me life and I was just like yeah yeah like a great sense of humor really does it for me as well because like for me like I have a sense of humor myself. I know it's not everybody's liking, as you guys can probably tell from this video. Like, I have a strange sense of humor and whatnot, a bit unhinged. The kind of humor that he was letting out and everything was just like, yes, yes, I like this. Even like with him like making comments like at the show and everything, went back in May, like the moment when he like pointed out that like, we were bringing the heat so much that they turned the AC on. <laughs> like, it was, it was so cold. It was so cold in there. That AC was working overtime for no reason at all in that venue. Great voice, great tattoos, wonderful beard, great sense of humor. He can get it. In that kids is a list of men within the metal scene that I find to be very attractive. Do your due diligence and check out all of their projects and everything. I've mentioned them throughout this video and everything. I'll have some links down in the description box below, or at least I'll try to. I'll probably forget to do so. So do your due diligence and search them up because don't rely on me to remember to link things down below because I will probably forget to do so. But who are some men that you find to be attractive within the metal scene? Let me know in the comments below. I'll probably do a part two to this next year. And so we'll have more men to talk about and they're sober in that particular video. But these are the ones that we talked about today. Did you agree with my picks? Do you find some of these men to be attractive as well or are you questioning my taste? 
I won't be upset if you are. But let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below on my list. And let me know your guys' lists and whatnot. Who do you find to be attractive within the metal scene? I'd be curious. I want to see these attractive men. Let me know. But that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And until I see you guys in my next one, whenever that might be, goodbye. And happy Pride and happy Father's Day.